This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, cat lovers, feline friends. This is Michelle Fern, your host on Catitude. Now, I know we don't have many products on Catitude because we're not a product show. And I and I know most of you listening are like, Ugh, I don't want to hear about a product. You know, I don't want another thing. But I came across something so different, so unique that I had to share with you. It's a process where this company takes your pet's you know, your cremated pet's ashes and turns it into this beautiful art. And no, it is not putting ashes on the canvas. Nothing like that. That would be creepy. So stay tuned and uh, we'll be right back and I'll introduce my guest. We'll be right back. As a pet parent to a dog and a cat, you're going to run into some catastrophes. Your dog eating up the cat's food or scavenging in the litter box is one of them. With DoorBuddy, you don't have to worry about cutting a hole in your door or struggling with a pet gate. DoorBuddy's adjustable door strap installs in seconds and without any tools. Finally, an easier way to let cats into rooms and keep dogs out of trouble. For 20% off DoorBuddy, use code CATITUDE20. That's CATITUDE20 at thedoorbuddy.com. That's thedoorbuddy.com. Give your cat back its space today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to welcome Ryan Norman. He is one of the co-founders of Ever After Art. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited about this. I am so excited to have you on Catitude. So, Ryan, Ever After Art, we're going to get into the technical of what it is because you have to, so it makes sense to people listening. But just give us this like sleek version, the slim version of what it is. Yeah, so... Ever After is a process where we send you a kit and it's almost like one of the DNA kits that you would, you know, see like 23andMe or something like that. And it includes a scoop and a jar. And all we need is a small teaspoon of the ash of your beloved pet. We don't need the whole thing or anything like that, but you would send it back to us with a, a return packaging. And we put it through a proprietary process where we mix it in with some things and we're able to extract the essential compounds that were in that ash. And each is completely different. Everything from you know what the pet ate to how it's lived its life there's so many things that go into it that really change all that chemistry. And um, we're able to create these beautiful crystals on a microscope slide and then take uh, high res images of them. And it just creates this really, really beautiful abstract art that is almost essentially a, like a snowflake. Each one's completely unique in color and shape. And it pretty much is something that is created from your pet. And I think that allows people to, to heal a lot better than some of the other memorial products that are out there that aren't as unique as this. So yeah, I mean, it's really exciting to be able to be involved with people healing and how that affects them. Okay. That's a good explanation before we get into some of the more technical so that people that are out there shaking their head going, what? This doesn't make sense that they'll understand it. Because, you know, some people like they're just, you know, they're not believers. Anyway, right. so when I told some of my um, colleagues and uh, close friends what I was doing, the first response I got was, "Ooh, you're putting ashes on a painting. I said, no. No. Where did you get that from? You know, what I liked is that before there was Mr. Zeus and a lot of people on the show heard about Mr. Zeus, there was Cassidy. She was my first girl, my first fur baby that was just mine. Mm -hmm. And I don't have like a lot of her because, you know, she passed in 2005 and I have a good picture of her, a good photograph that it was like one of those Santa Claus dog pictures without Santa, just her. But 
I don't have a lot of other stuff because technology was different. I don't have a lot of, you know, cell phones, the cameras back then weren't the same and all that kind of stuff. So when I um, got your information, I thought, wow, I could maybe send Cassidy's ashes. There is no time limit on ashes, of what, no expiration date from what I read from your information. But the thing that I heard over and over again was that sounds so weird. There's ashes and people just didn't understand that. No, I am not taking the ashes and putting them on the painting. Nobody else is doing that either. No one's taking the ashes and, and you know, like whipping them through some kind of process and putting them on paint. That's not how it is. It's nothing right. to do with that. That's what I heard over and over again. And I'm sure you have so many misconceptions out there that people think that is what you are doing. Yeah. So there's two important points to that. So to the first one, we definitely do not put the ash on the canvas itself. So wait, before you go into it, isn't that like really creepy too? Yeah, that would be a little strange. Yeah. I'm a father of uh, three French bulldogs and uh, everything we do at Ever After, we're all pet lovers. So we are always putting ourselves in the customer spot and how we would feel with certain things. So I think that's very important that, you know, we all are love our fur babies and, you know, just want to be a part of this. And, you know, I think essentially what you're seeing in these images is not the like ash itself that's spread on there. It's the crystal that is formed with our proprietary process of mixing in with the ash. And that's what you see is the crystals that form from that process. And yeah, I mean, we also, we deliver the digital print so you get a digital high res image with it as well. And then we also have canvas that you can add on to uh, put in your home. So you go into more of a technical process on your website and it talks about trace chemical elements remaining in the calcium that make up the skeletal structure. And that has a lot to do with just everything about the living creature, you know, while it was alive, eating habits, environmental surroundings, and then there's only bone fragment ash remains after the cremation process. So essentially what you're doing is you're like the snowflake example really makes sense to us that like myself that are not scientists, because it's pulling out that unique, I guess, formation. And then however, the colors come and so forth. Um, and I guess that's how it works. But you can give a better synopsis about what is the scientific side of this? So I think it'd be best to kind of go how we go to where we started and how we came up with this process. So we, through uh, family friends, we met this gentleman who's been working on doing microscopy for multiple years and has been slowly developing and testing through trial and error how to do things like this. And he essentially found and created this process and we were able to kind of tweak it and bring it into this where through a bunch of trial and error and, and trying to make sure that what we're extracting is what we're saying. And we found that there's tons and tons of difference in calcium and proteins and all the essential compounds that are found inside the animal changes the crystal formation. And I think it's really, really great because for the first time, really, we're able to create something that was made from your pet created it. And it's important to know that it's not an artist rendition. And we're essentially not changing or manipulating anything that you see. What you see in the final image is what we see in the microscope. So I think it's really cool. So speaking of that, I looked at some of the pictures on your website. It's kind of bizarre. Like, I think one of the pictures, it almost looks like there's a bird there. Mm -hmm. And that just comes out of the crystal. There's no manipulation at all. Yeah, no, we don't manipulate colors or anything. Okay, so we're going to take a short break. And then I'm going to tell you about my experience. We'll be right back. Listen up, pet lovers. If you're planning a vacation, you need to hear about trusted house sitters. They connect pet parents with verified and background checked sitters so you can travel worry-free knowing your fur baby has all the care and company they could need. I love this. I can't stand the thought of my pets being lonely or being in a kennel, so I can't wait to sign up. Catitude listeners, you get 20% off today with code CATITUDE20. 
That's Catitude 20. Go to TrustedHouseSitters.com and use the code Catitude 20 for 20% off. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. So I got the kit. So basically, it's very simple. There's a little scoop. You put a small scoop of ashes in a glass jar. There's a prepaid envelope. It says contains cremation or what does it say? Contains cremated cremated ashes or something. Yeah, it's cremated remains. Cremated remains, which I guess is, you know, for U.S., you know, legal by the post office. So went ahead and did that. It was a little strange, but, you know, I (laughs) go with the flow. So, you know, it's not every day you touch your deceased pets to ashes and everything, but went ahead, did the whole process. It wasn't a big deal and, and put it in and then waited. And I did receive the digital image and then later the canvas. So thank you so much. Now I was when the digital image was when I was trying to get it to open I didn't know what to expect. I was so nervous. I thought, oh my gosh, what if I see just black with little spots or something? What am I going to see? What is this? Because you don't know what to expect. And it was the most beautiful thing. It was just beautiful. The colors were vibrant and I don't know how to describe it, like an explosion in the center. And then it just opened up. I had had that kind of a look. But like you said, they're all abstract, so it's hard to explain. But it was just gorgeous. And I thought, wow, that's Cassidy. So it was just uh, mind blowing. And I know that you can do this with any pet that is deceased and you have the cremated ashes. Yes, correct. And I'm wondering about this, but the things that pop in my head, has anybody ever tried to send you human ashes? Not that we, obviously that we put in there that when you send the ashes, you have to fill out a um, a little pamphlet that we include where you sign essentially saying that you're only sending back, you know, the pet's cremated remains. And I sure hope not. I don't think it's legal. No, I, I, I would say that would be no. Yeah. But I think it is important to say, though, that, you know, we are well aware that this is a a new and kind of strange thing for someone to send someone that they don't know their ashes. But I just want to put in there that we put ourselves in the situation and we want to make sure that everything is tracked and everything is tied back to the owner. So the ash is just as important to us as it is the owner. You know, we want to really make sure that we have multiple tracking points in our facility and we're making sure that everything is is marked on the location and everything like that. So just want to put it out there that you're not just sending a random jar somewhere that it's really meticulously tracked to make sure that it is what you're getting. That's good to know. Then people can also send multiple ashes at one time from different pets? Yeah. So we've, we've had a couple of situations where obviously we have people that send and get multiple kits for each individual pet, but we actually have had a couple of people that had two, two dogs that ended up passing away at the same time and they got cremated together actually. So they sent the ashes of, of both of them in the same kit. And it was very interesting what came out. It's uh, pretty incredible. So yeah, there's been a lot of different things. Okay, Ryan. So what happens if there's two that, I mean, obviously it's going to mix together, be mixed. Is it widely different than a single set of ashes? You know, it's so hard to say because each art piece is so different from each other from the get-go anyways. So it's kind of hard to compare, you know, a single to a multiple when they're all so vastly different. But I, you know, there's definitely the essence of the, an- both animals are definitely, you know, mixed in there and influence the, the process equally for sure. Has anyone ever received their ashes back and said, that can't be my 
cat or dog, you know, my cat was like lively and fun. And then this has, you know, like more blues and gray kind of colors or although all the colors I've seen are pretty vibrant. And like you said, they're all abstract. So it's really cool looking. But has anybody ever said, oh, that's not what I expected my pet to look like? But how would they even know what they would look like from a crystal formation and a bone fragment? Yeah, well, I think it's important, you know, like we said, how there's no artist rendition. We really, really strive to give, you know, the customer and the pet parent the essence of what the pet actually created. And we haven't really dealt with anything where people don't like what they receive. I think it's so unique that I think there's a connection between the pet parent and and the the image that they truly feel that it's their pet and it is what it is what it is with the colors and all that stuff and I really think it's you know you can always look at it and find something new and like you said how you saw a bird in one of them it's kind of cool the the formations that you see the longer you look at them and I think the longer you look at it the more you realize that it is the pet since it's abstract art, you have to look and like see the essence, you know, I mean, Cassidy was a wild girl and she was always very happy, you know, always just wild, just not wild in a bad way, but a lot of energy, kind of sassy, you know, in, in, mm-hmm. if you will, where Mr. Z was kind of like, you know, I always called him my angel boy because he was just chill. And they were both similar in the fact that they were both like Cassidy was 60 pounds. Zeus and his max was like 45. They were flat hair retriever, border collie type breeds mixed, both rescues. I have a feeling if I ever did Zeus's, his would be more somber, but her colors are vibrant, like pinks and yellows and greens, but real bright, bright colors. But I was just like nervous to see what would pop up. But it's not only the formation of whatever comes up that's unique to your pet, the colors are as well, right? Yeah. So everything about it. So the colors are essentially from the shape of the crystal formation and the density of each individual crystal refracting different light through it. So it's completely based off of the the crystal structure on what color forms through. And yeah, I mean, it's completely different every single time. And as each crystal formation is completely different. And, you know, we see everything from darker final art pieces that have, you know, dark blue or like a purple, or even sometimes it's kind of like a off whitish color. And then you see everything from rainbows to, I mean, we see everything in the spectrum. It's pretty spectacular what you see. It's amazing. And anyone listening, go to at Michelle Fern Pet. You'll see my canvas of Cassidy and you'll find out why I was blown away. Okay, so Ryan, we talked so much about this. I want to ask you, I want to go through the process one more time since we talked about it here and there. So pet parents really get it. And then also to ask what has been to date your most unusual request, like maybe a bird, a horse, a a pig, a orangutan, or just cat and dog mostly. Yeah, so it's pretty spectacular, the different animals that we see. Ultimately, this process works for for any cremated animal from, you know, lizards, birds, cats and dogs are obviously the main focus as those are the most popular ones that we see. But we recently just were, we have a lion that we just did (gasps) um, from a zoo. And it was pretty unbelievable, the final image that we, we got from that. And obviously we have to get permission and stuff like that to, to share that. So hopefully we'll be able to share that in the future, but yeah, it's really, really cool. The different types of things that we, we see. And ultimately, you know, we would love to see new animals and see what we can get as a final, final image. But I think it's, it's really cool, not only just from, you know, let's say a dog to dog or a cat to cat, but it's cool to see the difference between something like a bird and to a lion. So it's pretty incredible, the differences. I hope you get permission. That would be something really cool to see on your site because I mostly saw, I think I saw a couple dogs. You need to have a cat on there too. I don't have any remains to send you of a cat, but do you have a cat that I missed? I don't know if we have a cat on the website, but we have received a couple cats that we have done. We would have to get permission from the owners to, to put those on there. 
but it all, you know, comes down to the essence of that pet. And it's really just cool between species, the difference between that. So that would be very cool. You are welcome to put Cassidy on there because hers was gorgeous. Appreciate it. I'd have to send you a picture of what she really looked like, though, right? Mm hmm. Okay, I have that. Hopefully it's in decent shape. We're going back, what, 17, oh, a long time, 17 years, but the picture's okay. Okay, so let's go over again the process so that people that are listening go, you know, this sounds cool. I should do this. And let me also tell everyone out there listening, I have not heard of a better way to memorialize your pet. I mean, most pets these days are cremated. I know at vet's office, they do either mass cremation or separate. I've always done separate. That's just important to me. But however you want to do it. But for this process, you'd have to do separate. There's no, as far as I read on understood from your website, Ryan, there's no expiration on ashes. So even though Cassidy's were who 17 years old, it didn't matter. And then why don't you finish the process from there? So what does somebody need to do to send it to you? Yeah. So if you visit everafterart.com, you can uh, view our process. You can see past results and all the information that you could want is on there. And under our products page, you can see that we have, it's called the Ever After Digital Artwork Kit. And so you, you would purchase that and you can also add from there, you know, different canvas sizes. Right now we, we have 20 by 16s or 30 by 24, 40 by 32 and an 8 by 10. And you would receive your kit in about four to five days. There's a pamphlet that's in there that walks you from, you know, step one all the way to the final thing. And um, we just wanted to make sure that this is a very easy process for someone because we know it is very emotional to, to go through this process, but we made it as simple and easy as we could. And then we include a shipping label and a envelope to send it back. And it's overnighted to us. We want to make sure that it's not out there in the system for multiple days. We want to get it and make sure that, you know, we have it in our control and we're able to track it and keep it safe. And then um, we start our proprietary process. It takes anywhere from about four to six weeks to go from receiving the ash to delivering the final image because it's just a really, really long process of creating these crystals. And um, at the end, you would receive a uh, email that brings you to a link to download the final image. And then um, you would also, if you got a canvas in your order, you would also receive that as well in the mail. Okay. Thank you for explaining all that. You know, when our fur babes pass as pet parents, we want to do anything to memorialize them. And you're right. It's such an emotional experience. And it just, there's always a little hole in your heart for all your fur babes that have gone, but this is such a beautiful way to memorialize them. Do you mind sharing the cost? Yeah. So the Ever After Digital Artwork Kit, which is the, the base kit that you start with, is $249.99. And then from there, you have obviously those options to, to add different canvas sizes. But included in that $249.99 is the high-res image that you receive. And it's anywhere from 300 to 400 megabytes that you would download it. So if you wanted to get it printed at a later time, or, you know, we can print it for you as well, but you can do a lot with that image. And yeah, I mean, it's just based off of the process and all of the things that we use and the time period and everything like that. That's why you see the cost of what it is, because it's just such a unique process to make it come to the end result. I think it's very reasonable. Just think if your pooch or your cat were still living, that would be like a one bet visit. I don't know. I just rationalize costs that way, which I'm plenty emotional <laughs> with my pets. But just to buy a nice urn could cost a couple hundred bucks. And that just sits there and doesn't do anything other than it sits there with ashes, right? This to me, I showed someone, they go, what's that? I said, this is Cassidy. What? And then I had to explain it. I think the biggest challenge is explaining it well so people don't understand the concept that there's not ash on the paint. It's, right. It has nothing to do with that. And I'm sure that's been your biggest challenge as well. But once you get past that and people understand what it, it is, it's really kind of cool. And I think the snowflake analogy makes a lot of sense. So what would you say to 
the pet parents out there that, you know, have an older pet or maybe have a friend that's going through a grieving period because they just lost a fur babe to tell them, you know, this is one of the best things you could do for yourself or for your grieving friend. Yeah. So I think it's great because ultimately when you put this artwork in your home, at the end of the day, no one else needs to know exactly what it is. It could just be something that you hold personally in your heart or you're, you can share with people. But I think it's really great how you can essentially bring the essence of your pet back into the home and how it makes an impact in, in the feel and the, the love that you feel in home. And ultimately, a lot of this stemmed from our family. We had a couple dogs and over a couple years, you know, the, the urns and everything like that just... I wouldn't say loss, but, you know, they kind of get put into the back of, the, you know, of everything. And it's nice to bring out the the essence of that pet back more than just having an urn or a paw print or something like that. So it can really impact the house and bring that, that pet back. That's a beautiful way to describe it. And so well, because the paw prints are usually not made well, and that's nothing you want to have out. And the urn is an urn, and sometimes they're not that nice. But this is so unusual and so magnificent. So thank you so much. Thank you. So where do people have to go to purchase Ever After Art? Yeah, so if you visit our website, everafterart.com. It'll take you to our website, and then we have our products page that you would click on, and then you have all your options. When you check out, you'll have a um, section where you fill out with the pet's name. And then um, each individual kit that you receive is specifically marked in our system and in our software attached to that animal. So right from the get-go, everything is tracked to make sure that your pet's ashes are safe and in well hands. I wish you so much success with this, Ryan. This is truly one of those amazingly unique products that I have I've never heard of anything even remotely like this, except for snowflakes that you see under a magnifying glass that are all different, which has nothing at all to do with any of this. But is there anything else like this out there? No. And I think that's why some people are a little confused. But I think over time of just, you know, if you have any questions, please reach out and we have a um, a section contact us and on the website that you can reach out to us. We're more than happy to talk about any of your questions or any of your concerns. But really, we just want to make sure that we're getting out to people that this really is something special and unique. And we want to share it with the world and be able to help with grieving pet parents. And yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think it's just people learning about what it is in the process. But I think you'll find that um, it's pretty incredible. I think it's pretty incredible. I was shocked and so pleased and just thrilled to have Cassidy like around me again, other than just by ashes. So I want to thank you so much for coming on Catitude. Thank you so much for having me. It was great being on here. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed this show of Catitude. I think it has been just an amazing journey to share with you regarding Ever After Art and how you can memorialize your pet in something so incredibly unique. I hope I am not going to be memorializing my kitties anytime soon. But, you know, I do know what I will do special when that time comes because I think Ever After Art is just amazing. So thanks for not contributing to this, but allowing me to share the journey that I had with Cassidy with all of you. I so appreciate it. I know Cassidy is not a cat. She's a dog. But I think this is something that a lot of cat lovers will love. You know, most of us have a couple of cats and we're always looking for a way to memorialize them, make them feel special to us, keep them in our home. And with Ever After Art, you just create something so unique, so different. Go check out their website, everafterart.com. I want to thank my cat crew, Charlotte and uh, Sammy, Jethro, Dennis and Molly for being my cat buds. Thanks to my guest, Ryan Norman, for telling us all about Ever After Art. Thanks to everyone that was listening to Catitude. I so appreciate it. And please understand, even though this show is a little product-y, I wanted to share it with you because it is so amazingly different than anything I've ever heard of before. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you to my producer, Mark Winter, for making me and my guests sound amazing. Now remember, lose the attitude, have catitude. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand. 
only on PetLifeRadio.com.